American forces are in Taiwan. On March 20, 2024, Taiwanese authorities confirmed that the United States has stationed troops on several islands inside the Taiwan Strait. And what's more, those troops are there on a permanent basis. The news must have angered Xi Jinping, especially given that one of the islands now hosting American forces is just one mile away from China and its southeast coast. It's a move that is sure to stir up some controversy, especially as the United States officially hasn't had troops stationed in Taiwan since 1979. That year heralded the normalization of relationships between America and China, with the US choosing to remove any direct presence on the island to maintain that relationship. Instead, all coordination between Taiwan and the US over the last four decades has come via the American Institute in Taiwan, essentially the US Embassy in the country. So the presence of troops now is a huge turnaround from the last four decades of policy, all of which leads us to a question. Why now? Specifically, why has the US decided to station troops in Taiwan, knowing that the move, especially now it's been revealed, could anger Xi Jinping? The first answer may come from Xi himself. Xi has made no secret of the fact that he believes that Taiwan should be part of a unified China. He makes historical claims, based on the Qing Empire's ownership of the island in the 17th century, to prove that point. Japan later claimed the island, following its defeat of the Qing Empire in 1895, only for China to briefly hold the reins again following World War II, when Japan was defeated. What followed was several decades of conflict between Taiwan and China. That conflict stemmed from the battle between Mao Zedong's Communist Party and General Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang, or Nationalist Party. When Mao defeated Chiang in China itself, the general fled to Taiwan, establishing his rule on the island, dubbing it the Republic of China. And therein lies the root of Xi's argument. He believes that Chiang's rule in Taiwan means that the island has always been a part of China's territory, with its independence and autonomy over the last 60 years or so flying in the face of the supposed fact that Taiwan should be part of China. However, the Taiwanese people use the very same history to argue for their independence. To them, the island was never a part of the modern Chinese state, formed by the Chinese Communist Party in 1911, or part of the People's Republic of China that came into being under Mao Zedong in the 1940s. China's rule of the island demonstrated Taiwan's independence rather than its subservience. Today, if you ask Taiwanese people how they identify their nationality, around 62% will say Taiwanese, with 31% saying they're both Chinese and Taiwanese. The rest, a tiny percentage, claim to be Chinese alone as of 2023. To Xi, those statistics are irrelevant. He made that much clear in his annual New Year's address on January 1, 2024, during which he made a special point to claim that Taiwan would surely be reunified with China at some point in the near future. That speech was remarkable in its own right, not because of the message itself. China and Xi have long claimed that Taiwan should be part of China, but rather it was the tone that Xi used to make the claim that startled many. In the previous year's message, Xi had been much more conciliatory, calling Taiwan a part of the same family as China. The 2024 address seemed to carry a veiled threat, with some suggesting that it hinted at Xi's intention to use military force to take the island, perhaps even during this year. There had been plenty of hints towards this in the months leading up to the address, as well as in the months that followed. China has grown increasingly bold in running military drills in the Taiwan Strait, with many of those drills encroaching on Taiwanese territory. Take its aerial incursions during the early 2020s as an example. In 2020, China flew 380 planes over Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ, a region under Taiwanese control that the country monitors as a means to prepare its air defenses. Each violation was essentially a warning to Taiwan, letting the island know that China isn't afraid to be on the country's radar, and they kept coming. With 2021 came 960 incursions, nearly triple those of the year prior, with fighter jet sorties increasing dramatically to 538. Xi became even bolder in 2022, sending an enormous 1,727 planes into the Adiz, including several bombers and even the H-6, which is a nuclear-capable plane that could, in theory, drop a nuke on the island if needed. To Taiwan, these sorties are clear shows of aggression from a country that intends to overrun and take control of the small island nation. They're also far from the only examples of China testing the Taiwanese waters. November 2023 brought with it reports that nine Chinese aircraft had crossed the Davis Line, a hypothetical line drawn through the Taiwan Strait that essentially divides the body of water into Taiwanese and Chinese halves. 
That drill included several of China's J-10 and Su-30 fighter jets, as well as aircraft dedicated to electronic warfare. That was just one of many such drills in 2023. And in March 2024, Tsai Ming-yen, Taiwan's National Security Bureau director, made his opinions on the reasons for these drills clear. China is trying to get everybody else accustomed to the idea of it having an active military presence near Taiwan. They are trying to normalize their military activities, Tsai claimed, pointing out that many of the drills, which China calls combat readiness patrols, are timed to coincide with key diplomatic events, such as visits from foreign dignitaries. Even Xi's 2024 New Year's address came just two weeks before Taiwan held its elections. According to Tsai, these timings aren't coincidental. He believes that China was subtly coercing Taiwan into surrendering its autonomy through displays of its military and, by extension, its economic might. With China posing such a threat, albeit indirectly at the moment, it's easy to speculate that the presence of American troops in the country is a direct response to these combat readiness patrols, and it's a response that may have been made possible with the passing of a certain act in 2023, the National Defense Authorization Act 2023, or NDAA. The NDAA is passed annually, with each iteration essentially existing to dictate America's military approach for the year ahead. The 2023 version was notable for several reasons. First, it authorized $858 billion for national defense programs for 2024, with the House Armed Services Committee making a point that this amount was $45 billion more than President Joe Biden requested. The House's summary of the act even took a shot at Biden, claiming that this action would reverse the president's reckless cuts to our national security. But perhaps more pressingly, that same summary also claims that the act not only reaffirms the United States' support of defending Taiwan, but clears the way for the Indo-Pacific forces to conduct military exercises with the country, no matter what the Chinese say, as the summary puts it. It goes on to state that the 2023 NDAA will fully fund any military exercises the United States holds with its allies and partners in the Pacific, including Taiwan, in an effort to curb China's growing influence. All of that brings us back to what's happening in Taiwan at the moment. American troops are now stationed on and around the island, but how many, and who specifically, is there? The key thing to point out is that the United States hasn't started to amass thousands of troops in Taiwan. It's not building a fighting force in the country, and the volume of troops deployed so far will be able to do little in defense of Taiwan were China to launch an attack today. It's also worth pointing out that the United States hasn't officially confirmed the presence of its troops in Taiwan. Instead, the confirmation comes from Taiwan's defense chief, Chi Kuo Cheng, who has this to say when he was asked to confirm reports that U.S. Army Green Special Forces had been stationed permanently on the island. No matter the situation, there may be blind spots or shortcomings, so we need to communicate with our allies, whether it's as a team, a group, or a country. While that sounds somewhat vague, it's also not a denial of the reports. As such, it's safe for us to assume, and indeed the media to report, that US Army Green Special Forces, also known as the Green Berets, are stationed in Taiwan. That brings us to two more questions. Where are the Green Berets stationed, and what will they be able to do for Taiwan? Before answering those questions, it's worth exploring who the Green Berets are and what they traditionally do. According to Military One Source, the Green Berets are military legends, as a special forces team that employs guerrilla warfare tactics to take on terrorists, often on the terrorists' turf. Their training takes 63 weeks to complete, divided into six stages, during which they learn new languages and take part in simulated missions at Pineland. Based in North Carolina, this facility mimics the terrain of a hostile foreign country, allowing the select few who make it through to hone their skills so they become extremely dangerous on the battlefield. While that all may seem hyperbolic, there's no denying that the Green Berets are often seen as the elite of America's special forces. They've also been used throughout history to provide special training to America's allies. We saw this during the Vietnam War, when the team was among the first American troops committed to the country, where they trained 58 members of the South Vietnamese Army to arrange a counterattack against the Viet Cong. By the time the United States withdrew from that war, the Green Berets were assisting over 80,000 soldiers in the fight, in short, and as the Green Beret Foundation puts it, the Green Berets are the best-trained soldiers the US has and are typically deployed for the most complex missions. And they're now in Taiwan. While Taiwan's defense ministry hasn't commented on specific plans for the troops the US has sent over, Newsweek reports that a handful of Green Berets are stationed with the 101st Amphibious Reconnaissance Battalion, which is one of Taiwan's special operations groups on two islands, Pengu and Kinmen. 
Both are tactically important locations if a war breaks out between China and Taiwan. Standing almost directly in the middle of the Taiwan Strait, Penghu has been described as an island fortress by Forbes and is seen by many as one of Taiwan's most crucial lines of defense. Part of that cruciality lies in the island's positioning. To attack Taiwan, China would have two options. It could send an invasion fleet to the country's north, attempting to sail straight into the port that serves Taiwan's capital, Taipei. But doing so would be suicidal, at least for the first few waves of troops that attempt to invade, due to the extensive coastal defenses Taiwan has erected to guard Taipei. For that reason, the more likely route for China would be through the south of Taiwan. And to get there, China would have to either suppress or capture Penghu. That island is home to Taiwan's Skybo-3 surface-to-air missile system, which is capable of obliterating targets flying at altitudes of up to 27.9 miles, as well as the Siung Feng-2 anti-ship missiles. These cruise missiles would subject any Chinese garrison that attempted to bypass the island to an absolute battery, meaning taking Penghu would be crucial to China's plans. That would be no easy task. Penghu is home to a permanent garrison of 60,000 troops who are equipped with artillery and around 70 M60 tanks. In the waters surrounding the tiny island, you'll often see a Taiwanese missile destroyer, a ship that exists almost solely to take out missiles fired by aircraft. So the island serves both offensive and defensive purposes. Its heavy fortifications mean that any attempted Chinese invasion would be long and arduous with China likely to lose multiple soldiers to every one that Taiwan loses in its efforts to take the island. But China can't simply bypass Penghu. The island's anti-ship missiles put paid to that idea. As China attempted to take Penghu, it would face a battery of missiles focused on its ships, along with anti-air defenses designed to take out its aircraft. And the odds are that all of these capabilities would be supplemented by Taiwan's air force. Even if Penghu was eventually taken, the battle over the island would give Taiwan time to arrange defenses on the mainland, making China's invasion even more difficult. Then there's Kinmen. Also known as Kemoi, this small group of islands is governed by Taiwan but sits just 6.2 miles east of the Chinese coast and the city of Xiamen. Between the two locations lies Xiamen Bay, with any Chinese invasion attempt likely to include taking Kinmen. For Taiwan, that means Kinmen is the first line of defense. Here, the defenses built into the island are intended to batter the invading Chinese forces as best as possible so they're weakened before they ever reach the Taiwanese mainland. Knowing this, Taiwan has stationed an array of defenses among the 12 islands that make up Kinmen, including its 119th, 127th, and 158th garrison brigades. Those troops are supported by the 101st Amphibious Battalion, with whom the Green Berets are stationed, and the 584th Armoured Brigade. But beyond that, little is known of the militaristic capabilities of the islands. According to Le Monde Diplomatique, the islands differ from Penghu because they have a large civilian population of up to 60,000 people. It also notes that the last reliable data we have about the island, which comes from 2014, suggests that there are 3,200 troops stationed there. Some argue that this means that Kinmen has lost some of its historical importance, at least in a military sense, especially as these numbers indicate that Taiwan has withdrawn forces from the islands over the last couple of decades. The introduction of the Green Berets into Kinmen suggests otherwise. What seems more likely is that Kinmen, in addition to being the initial front line of a war between China and Taiwan, could become home to guerrilla forces that fight China as it attempts to take the islands. The presence of the 101st Amphibious Battalion also suggests that Kinmen could serve as the launching point for special operations inside China itself, aided by the island's close proximity to the Chinese mainland. So it's clear that these two locations hold strategic importance for Taiwan. Which brings us back to the question, what are the Green Berets doing on Penghu and Kinmen? Officially, or at least from what we can glean from Taiwan's comments, the Green Berets are stationed on these islands in a training capacity. Chu Kuo Cheng hinted at this when responding to reporters' questions about the presence of American troops. We can learn from each other to see what strengths we have, he said, before going on to state that the arrangement was a fixed thing. In other words, it appears that the US troops deployed to these islands are part of a fixed agreement between Taiwan and the United States. They may even be stationed there permanently. Newsweek speculates that the Green Berets sent to the islands are actually instructors who will focus on training and sharing information with the Taiwanese special forces already deployed on Penghu and Kinmen. It backs this speculation by reporting on United Daily News, or UDN, which is a Taiwanese news agency that has highlighted similar training operations taking place in the past. For instance, UDN claims that there is an American military presence on Taoyan, 
a city on the Taiwanese mainland that's also providing training to the country's troops. In that case, the training focuses on drone equipment, which Taiwan hopes to procure for its Airborne Special Service Company, another elite team that focuses on special missions. Perhaps the Green Berets are providing similar training on Pengu and Kinmen. At the very least, we can speculate that they're sharing American intelligence relating to China's activities while helping special forces on the island come up with a plan to cause damage to Beijing's operations should an invasion occur. They may also be the first of a larger group that may be deployed onto the islands in the future, bolstering Taiwan's defenses and seeing the United States present a more direct military threat to China. Still, this is all speculation. As this video is being produced, the head of the United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John Aquilino, said that contrary to a recent news report, there are no American Special Forces personnel permanently stationed on Taiwan's outlying Kinmen Island. If they do admit it, they'll likely focus on the training aspect of the deployment by highlighting that the US and Taiwan are running their own equivalents to China's combat readiness drills. If China is going to have patrols in the Taiwan Strait, it stands to reason that Taiwan would run training drills to counter whatever military operations Beijing has in mind with these drills. But there's no official word, which brings us to another question. What does China think about all of this? Much like the United States, China is keeping quiet in that area. Newsweek even highlights that the Chinese Foreign Ministry has yet to respond to its written requests for comment, much like the US Army. Still, we can speculate, and it's likely that Xi's opinions on the reports mirror those he shared in the past. For instance, AP News reported on a warning that Xi issued in April 2023 over a situation that was somewhat similar to what we're seeing in Taiwan at the moment. Back then, he said through a spokesperson from the Chinese Taiwan Affairs Office that China will resolutely oppose the US having any form of official or military contact with China's Taiwan region. That statement came in response to reports that the US military was going to send officers into Taiwan to train their positional counterparts. It came on the back of other Taiwanese reports claiming that the US has also sent 200 troops, predominantly Marines, into the country to help train troops. Back then, Taiwan's defense ministry didn't confirm or deny the reports, similar to the responses it gave in the light of these most recent suggestions that Green Berets are operating in Taiwan. But China made its feelings very clear. It doesn't like the idea of American troops being in a territory that it believes is its own, and make no mistake, that ownership is the key concern. The April 2023 statement even makes reference to China's Taiwan region, suggesting that Xi sees American troops on Taiwanese soil as an incursion into China itself. It would be inaccurate to claim that Xi sees this as any sort of invasion. His response would have been far more inflammatory if he did, but it's almost certain that he sees it as an insult to his position on what Taiwan is and what it represents to China, meaning that the Green Berets stationed in Taiwan may introduce more tension into diplomatic relationships between Washington and Beijing. All of this leaves us with a final question. What happens next? Any answers would be purely speculative. Officially, the United States has long had a strange relationship with Taiwan. It doesn't officially support Taiwanese independence, for instance, a fact made very clear by the Department of Defense in its fact sheet relating to America's relationship with Taiwan. However, it also serves as the region's largest arms provider and has held strong unofficial relations with Taiwan's government for decades. You could even argue that without America's weapons and unofficial support, Taiwan would likely have been annexed and assimilated by China fairly easily at some point over the last 20 years. As for China, the presence of even more American troops in Taiwan, especially on such tactically significant islands, is sure to cause anger. But it likely won't cause any change in Xi's approach to Taiwan. After all, a handful of Green Berets, as effective as they may be as a fighting force and a means of training Taiwan special forces, will be able to do little to prevent China from deploying its full military might should it decide to invade. Furthermore, the unofficial nature of America's relationship with Taiwan makes it difficult to anticipate what the US would do if China did invade. Would it deploy troops directly? Or would it sit back and hope Taiwan can defend itself with the help of the weapons it's bought from America and the training it's currently receiving from US troops? Perhaps the answer to those questions lie in how much of a threat the US believes China would pose should it take control over Taiwan. Its response would be measured by that threat determination, with the likelihood being that the US would argue for the maintenance of the status quo while continuing to support Taiwan indirectly for as long as it's able to hold out. And it's with that that we turn things over to you. With reports of Green Berets being in Taiwan all but confirmed, what do you think this all means for Washington's relationships with both Beijing and Taipei? Do you think Xi Jinping is going to come up with a response, perhaps by ramping up his combat readiness patrols in the Taiwan Strait, 
And do you think America's presence in Taiwan will have an impact on his plans for the island? Let us know what you think in the comments section, and thank you for watching the video. Now go and check out Taiwan's strategy to counter Chinese invasion, or click this other video instead.